Welcome to lecture 8, the last few miles. In this lecture, we will find out what is the last mile, what options are there for the last mile, and how do you make consumers DIY. The last mile is a metaphor used to describe the movement of goods from a fulfillment center to their final destination, which is you, the consumer. It is literally the last leg of a product's trip before it arrives at the customer's doorstep. A distribution channel comprises of the chain of businesses or intermediaries through which goods pass until they reach the consumers. The channel can be made out of wholesalers, retailers, or even the internet itself. Producers who sell to consumers directly over the internet still need to rely on one or more 3 PLs in the country of origin and the destination country to physically export the product and then carry the product the last mile to the consumer. Producers who sell to retailers work with 3 PLs in the country of origin to physically export the product to the destination country. The retailer is responsible for carrying the product the last mile to the consumer. Producers who sell to wholesalers are only responsible for sending their products to the wholesalers in the country of origin. The wholesaler has to export the product to retailers in the destination country, and the retailer is responsible for carrying the product to the consumer. The last mile is the moment that matters because it determines the ultimate customer's satisfaction. Even if the rest of the supply chain functions perfectly, it will fail if the last mile delivery is not completed well. Only by fulfilling customers' needs right up to the last mile will the company be able to build a loyal customer base that is critical to any company's success. So what are the options for last mile delivery? A company can choose to have their own private fleet of vehicles to serve their customers directly. To start their own private fleet, the company can choose to buy or lease vehicles. Of course, they have to ensure that there is adequate space within the company premises to park the vehicles in their fleet. Next, they will need to hire drivers and sometimes cargo hands if necessary. Besides the transport staff, there usually needs to be some supporting staff such as supervisors, executives and managers. All these manpower would need sufficient office space and staff amenities within the company. The biggest decision for a private fleet is obviously that of buy or lease. Buying would mean a high capital expenditure, which is the upfront cost of purchasing a vehicle. Leasing does not have capex and will have a low monthly recurring cost or rental payment. In the long term, it will be more expensive. The company has more flexibility with vehicles they own as they can deploy these vehicles anywhere and mileage is not controlled. A leased vehicle typically comes with some restrictions on deployment and usage may be kept at certain mileage, otherwise additional cost is incurred. A company that buys its own vehicles will be responsible for the regular servicing and repairs needed to keep their vehicle in good working condition. It will be inconvenienced by downtime when vehicles break down, and in fact they might need to buy and keep extra standby vehicles to buffer against such contingencies. If the company leases their vehicles from a vendor, these responsibilities shifts to the vendor. The vendor has to monitor the usage of the vehicles, lies with the company for regular servicing, and also provide replacement vehicles when breakdowns occur. Overall, the company should have minimal downtime. It can be seen that buying your own vehicles comes with quite a bit of extra work. Besides ensuring the physical functionality of the fleet, there is also paperwork that needs to be done with respect to things such as insurance and road tax. For a leased vehicle, the vendor's leasing price is an all-inclusive one and they will take care of such additional paperwork. As we have learned in the previous lecture, many companies now choose to outsource their transport and distribution needs to 3PLs. There are many types of 3PLs ranging from local SMEs to global logistics companies that provide these services for customers. Most companies would choose to focus their, on their core competencies, such as designing and manufacturing of their products. They rely on a wide selection of 3PLs to handle their end-to-end -end supply chain functions, including international shipping, warehousing, distribution, and last mile delivery. For a company that has decided to outsource their last mile delivery to a 3PL, they will find that they do not need to buy or lease vehicles, provide parking space, they do not need to hire drivers, cargo hands, and any supporting staff. They also do not need to provide office space and staff amenities for transport staff. Besides the traditional 3PL approach, there is now another alternative, the modern crowdsource platform, something which has greatly disrupted the industry in the last few years. 
Although not all companies find this a good fit for their business, for some companies it has led to increased delivery efficiency and improved customer service. It remains to be seen if this disruptor will lead to a gradual shift away from global 3PLs. Let's look at some of these companies. Carpel was launched in Singapore in 2014 by a Dutch innovator and entrepreneur. It has grown into a popular and reliable last mile delivery service for consumers and businesses alike, delivering anything from fresh food, flowers, household items to furniture. It is currently serving businesses and consumers across different industries in Asia and they are still expanding globally. Ninja Van was set up in 2014 by the 27-year-old Lai Changwen with two of his friends. Despite all three having zero experience in logistics, Ninja Van would redefine the industry by enabling next-day door-to-door deliveries for e-commerce firms. Today, they are the region's largest and fastest-growing last-mile logistics company, with a network covering six countries. Similar companies, Google Van and Lala Move, also started in Hong Kong in 2013 and currently have established operations across Asia. Watch the online videos about Ninja Van and Lala Move to find out more about what they do. The trend is not limited to just Asia. Examples of such startups from the rest of the world include Glovo in Spain, Epic in Australia, and Postmates in the US. So exactly what is the difference between a traditional 3PL and a new crowdsourced last mile delivery service provider? A traditional 3PL might optimize the operations by dividing their service areas into different sectors. They use a fixed number of delivery personnel to do batch deliveries for all customers in a particular sector. A crowdsource model is based on a web-based platform that uses complex matching algorithms to leverage thousands of part-time delivery people for deliveries. These may be non-professional drivers who can earn extra income by just downloading an app to begin receiving delivery orders. Most of these apps incorporate real-time visibility, enable track and trace, and offer route optimization, documentation, and signature capture for proof of delivery to give retailers peace of mind when they send packages out for delivery. This model offers low startup costs, asset-like operations, lower operating costs, and generally an improved customer service experience. On the surface, the crowdsource model does seem superior. Considering resources, a 3PL on its own has a limited set of resources. A crowdsourced platform is able to connect their customers with a potentially unlimited pool of diverse resources. In terms of efficiency, a 3PL can only commit to delivering a fixed assortment of orders each day based on the delivery lead times committed to their customers. A crowdsourced platform optimizes the mixing and matching of people with orders from different sources. This is a dynamic system that is capable of adjusting to changes in daily volumes. Of course, every system has its downsides. From a branding and image perspective, a 3PL will have their own distinct branding and corporate image. On the other hand, a crowdsourced platform consists of a diverse mix of part-timers delivering a variety of products. For certain businesses where image is important, this way may not be so desirable to them. Lastly, a 3PL has direct control over the hiring, training and management of its delivery team who are full-time staff. A crowdsourced platform depends largely on part-timers who are not their direct employees, some of whom are also not full-time delivery staff. The degree of control of the quality of performance is generally somewhat weaker than for a 3PL. Finally, the last mile delivery option is to simply let the customer DIY. Companies are increasingly turning to self-collection to reduce their last mile fulfillment costs. Instead of delivering orders to a customer at home, some companies let their customers place orders and make payment online before going to a store to collect the orders. This concept has been successfully applied by grocery retailers worldwide, including NTUC FairPrice in Singapore, Walmart in the US, Carrefour in France, and Tesco in the UK. For customers to know exactly what they want, this allows them to skip the hassle of a crowded supermarket and simply go straight to a designated counter, show and scan a QR code from their mobile phones, pick up their orders, and breeze off. The other method that offers customers even greater convenience is that of the automated locker. Customers' orders are placed inside the lockers by a specific cutoff time. Customers visit the lockers at the timing of their convenience even when the store is closed. At the locker, they scan a QR code from mobile phones to unlock the correct locker, pick up the orders and go. For Woolworths in Australia, this system has helped their customers have access to fresh food on a daily basis. A customer orders their groceries on the mobile phones during a train ride to work in the morning 
On the way home at night, they pop by Woolworth lockers in the train station, pick up the groceries, and go home to cook and enjoy their dinner. Besides supermarkets, automa automated lockers have also been widely used globally by e-commerce businesses. In addition to being used to drop off packages, the automated lockers have also become a convenient way for customers to drop off return items, saving businesses the expense of sending drivers to physically collect them. For the next level up in terms of customer service, some supermarkets in Europe also provide a modified version of click and collect known as click and drive through. Customers check in on their mobile apps when they're half an hour away from the store. The store employees bring out their orders to a designated drive through lanes and when the customers arrive, after a quick scan of a QR code for confirmation, the order is loaded into the car boot and customers drive off without needing to even alight from the car. And that brings us to the end of this lecture. See you next time.